In this cardigan, with this background, I'm giving you absolute Nana chic. You are welcome. Hi and welcome to my channel, I'm Simon and today I am back with a video telling you all about a new favourite book. I did try and make this video yesterday, however I ended up talking for I think 18 minutes, well not even talking about, just gushing about this book and going off on loads of different tangents, but it's a book that I'm desperate to tell you all about and it's something that I would like to do more on this channel is talk about favourite books. I think I did it once last year, which interesting was around the same time as I'm doing it now and that book became one of my absolute favourite books of the year last year and I think this one is going to be this year. Also, having gone back after finding loads of comments on this channel that I didn't realise had been left, I've gone back through six years worth. I've responded to them all now. I feel so much better. Even if it's just a love heart, I've responded. And I actually saw that it's something that I haven't really, really done, but I would like to. Only with special books though. I do kick myself actually that I should have done this for Still Life by Sarah Women last year. Shame on me. Now before I go any further and start talking about this book and teasing you just a little bit longer, if you can hear an alarm in the background, no, it's not the fashion police. It's possibly the old lady that I stole this off from. It's at that slightly annoying pitch that I can hear it when I stop talking, but because I'm going to not stop talking, you won't notice. Sorry, I talked about the alarm, then I was so aware of it, I had to have a little break from the room. Right, I'm back. If you watch my reading vlog from last week, it will be no surprise to you that the book is The Island of Missing Trees by Elif Shafak. I think this is utterly, utterly wonderful. I just fell head over heels in love with it, its characters, all the things it talks about and so I wanted to have a chat with you about it and give it its own special video. I'm going to give you a little brief sort of overview of the story and then I'm going to talk about what it was about it that made it so fantastic for me, apart from just the fact that it was Alicia Fack's amazing writing and well we'll go into all of that. So at the start we meet Ada who is living in London uh, with her father Costas. Her mother has died uh, the Christmas before 11 months ago and she's struggling at school, she's feeling quite ostracised, quite an outsider, and two things happen that make this feel even more horrific and immediate to her. And one of those is that the whole class for homework has to find out about a member of their family, an older generation member of their family and their history. And she's like, well, well, she doesn't say this, but she doesn't know that because her parents came over from Cyprus having sort of been disowned by their families as one of them was Greek and one of them was Turkish. And um, with all of the tumultuous past that Cyprus has had, which we'll come to a little bit later, um, because it's one of the things that I thought was so powerful about this book, um, that was, was not like allowed. So basically they had to leave. And um, so she hasn't got anyone that she can talk to about that. And on top of that, I don't want to give anything away, but something happens to Ada and she does something and it's caught on camera and it goes kind of viral. And so she's also got all of that to contend with, knowing that after the Christmas holidays, she's going to have to come back to that, but also seeing it happening while the Christmas holidays are going on. Now, at the same time as this, her father Costas is burying the fig tree that they brought over as a cutting when him and his wife, Daphne, or Daphne came over when she was pregnant with Ada. And so we get to kind of see what he's doing with the tree, but also, and this is where the book kind of goes into magical realism, um, the fig tree talks to us and tells us its story and the story that it's heard through the uh, animals, insects, birds, uh, people that it has um, come into contact with when it was part of the tree uh, that it was cut from back in Cyprus in a restaurant called The Happy Fig, which the menu of is in here. And, oh my goodness, that made me so hungry. But also that leads us to another storyline that I thought was beautiful about the owners of The Happy Fig. And I won't say any more about that because I don't want to spoil it because that for me was one of the emotional, most emotional parts. Of it. I mean, this book made me cry three times, I should say. Um, once about the, the Happy Fig, once about a parrot that really, really, really set me up and then just the end of the book and the way it all uh, sort of unraveled and tied up and everything. Anyway, what we do with the fig tree is we go back um, through the decades, back through Cyprus's past and how Costas and Daphne met and how their relationship sort of blossomed, I guess, pun intended. And it's just a wonder. So that kind of encapsulates the book. What I loved, first and foremost, was Elif Shafak's writing. The characters she creates are so vivid. So Ada, you just really feel her 
loneliness and her grief and how she's being bullied like and that really chimed me because I got bullied really badly as a kid so there was that added layer I guess of empathy and sympathy for her that I had but also what it's like to be an outsider and I think Leif Shafak captures that perfectly as, as a kid but also in some ways as an adult with some of the glimmers that we get with Costas. The fig tree being a character is just incredible and it reminded me how much I love magical realism when it's done right, when it's done with a real deft touch. In some ways like a fig tree talking to you and telling its story and the story of the people that it's known, like I said, some of the insects and animals and birds it's encountered which create this whole tapestry, oh, no not tapestry, whole kind of patchwork of stories around this story of um, Costas and Daphne and, and how Ada came to be. I'm not a fan normally of inanimate objects talking but I love the voice, um, I love the way that through this fig tree we get such an insight into nature which we'll come to a little bit more but also this fact that it was this sort of the the book looks at cypress's past which has been really really tumultuous and it reminded me again and it was well, it didn't remind me but it, it i love this book because it's something that i love when i find a book particularly fiction i'm not so good with non-fiction actually i haven't read any non-fiction yet this year and i need to get a crack on with that when i read about a period of another country's history that i know very little about be it that country or indeed the history and i learn so much more and i feel like i've had some even just like glimmer of it and you do feel like what the characters go through you really feel for them and you really feel their emotions and also the sense of the atmosphere at the time because cyprus um Basically, the, the Greek Cypriots and the Turkish Cypriots ended up um, in conflict. And so a lot of innocent people were either um, killed horrifically or they were exiled or they fled. And it looks also how like Cyprus used to be such a glamorous place, like Hollywood go and visit and everything before before these awful things happened. It looks at the islanders from both sides, but without really taking any sides. It, it's I won't say Switzerland, but it's not, it's Cyprus. What it's really reminded me of, as well as the fact that I love, or not even reminded me of, what it has shown me is how much I love books, fictional books, about nature. Now, I've read some non-fiction about nature and love that, but this, it did remind me, because I used to read a lot more nature books, so it did remind me, but also showed me now because I think it's been a while and you know if you've been watching this channel for a while that I've been talking about how I want to find myself as a reader again I feel like I've forgotten my taste and I don't know if this was a big taste when I was younger I feel like it was but it's definitely like there's a there's something about the nature writing in here that has made me want to read as many fiction books as possible about nature and um, because this book is so wondrous in how first of all I found out like the fact that people bury um, fig trees and um, we have a fig tree and we've never buried it and I was like oh maybe we should and um, also I love little facts like um, the fact that you can tell the sex of a fig tree this one in particular which is the same as the one that we have here uh, bears its own fruit it doesn't need a male in order to create fruit but then also there'll be like trees that appear throughout the book as well as the nature but just focusing on trees first and um, like a hawthorn tree that sort of taps on Ada's window and she's feeling really sad and um, that is well it doesn't have a gender I loved how this book through certain moments like that brought subjects that are really kind of being discussed and heightened at the moment and sort of show them in nature and how that is just the way it is and um, so yeah so I love that too and um, but also how much we as humans rely on trees and um, both in the fact that trees provide um, homes and like they're a source of sustenance um, for animals and birds and insects and all nature but also like how we read books there's a bit where uh, the fig tree talks about the burning of books in cyprus which was heartbreaking the way that we choose to be buried um in in books well we're not buried in books sorry that's just me personally i'd like to be buried in books not right now I'm watching the shelves suddenly how we are buried in wood um, and how we have wood around us and just all the different ways in which trees and them as a resource is so important and pivotal in human life. I thought that was phenomenal, but also what we're doing to trees and indeed to nature. I also, there's one point that I thought was beautiful where uh, the fig tree talks about how nervous they were to be planted and grow in um, Britain when they weren't originally from there. Again, like I said, with the hawthorn tree, it's, it's these subjects that are going on in society that 
Alicia Fat looks at beautifully through nature. Also, it was just all the different facts I learned. If you have dinner with me at any point over the next few months, prepare to be absolutely nature facted out. In fact, I'd say, if you're gonna do that, read this book first, because then you'll know it and you're gonna say, Simon, shush. I learned things about how um, simple changes in the way we behave affected bats in the past. I looked at the rumours of, um, I think it was storks, and oh, there's myths and legends in here as well, as I should say, like as well as magical realism, there's quite a few reflections on uh, obviously Aphrodite, who um, was said to come from the foam of the sea of Cyprus. So there's quite a lot of that that goes on, as well as this gorgeous writing about the food, both in the fact that one of the places that um, Costas and Daphne meet is in the Happy Fig. Um, and it's all about the food that's served there. Like I said, there's a menu in here, which is, oh, I want to eat everything. But also when, um, this isn't a spoiler to say this, when Ada's auntie Miriam arrives, who kind of helps reveal what happened with Costas and, and, and Daphne. So it's important to mention actually. And she just comes and she's a really fantastic character um, in all sorts of ways, but she, she wants to teach Ada the recipes to cook and the right way to say things. And oh, it's just, that was all wonderful. Like the cultural flavors literally throughout the book. So like I said, there's myths and legends like why one bird, I think it is stalks, stopped. They're the only ones that can't um, sing. And there's a myth around why that happened. And it's all based around um, Cyprus. And you also get like, there's certain attributes that, that are given to the um, animals and insects and birds as they tell their stories. Like there's a quite a pesky mosquito that has a real literal sting in that tale. It's just phenomenal. I, I just came away wanting to kind of watch every nature documentary and also really rethinking about like if this, if the stuff that's written about in here was affecting nature, it's like in the 50s, 60s, 70s, what on earth are we doing now is a reminder of that, even though again, and again, that's a subject that's kind of talked about constantly. So it, it does all of this, but with the most gorgeous writing, it's the sort of book that I, I both wanted to race through and also wanted to kind of eke out. And actually I should say, Chris is currently reading it. This is the um, British uh, proof. Um, and this is the American edition that I had in port because I just think that cover so gorgeous. And Chris is absolutely loving it, but he didn't want to race through it. We were going to make a video together about it. But he's like, no, no, I want to read this slowly and really enjoy it. And I read this slowly for me because like I said, as it went on, I, I just wanted to get out. And then also I just got so emotionally involved. The fact that I cried three times, proper ugly, snotty sobs, particularly about a parrot. Uh, I just think it shows how this book had me just completely and utterly hooked. And when I finished it, I just sat with it and held it and like gave it a little bit of a hug. I think it's utterly, utterly incredible. And hopefully, if you haven't read it, you're gonna wanna go and read it now. And I would love if you have read it, for you to let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. And if you go away and read it, do come back and leave your comments below too. And I haven't done any spoilers. Hopefully I've just given you, going back to the foodie element of it, a flavour. And I'm so excited that I've got Alif Shafak's backlist to go to. Also, this is my third book of Alif's that I've read and loved. So officially now, she's a favourite author. And even though one of them was quite small, it was um, How to Stay Sane in Asia Division, which is a pocket book of power and wisdom. If you haven't read that, do read it. Um, I think the fact that I love this so much, like, I don't think it matters how the size of actually how much it means to you anyway that's a whole different video possibly that i've just suddenly thought of i think as well whilst it's harrowing in a lot of ways it's so hopeful and haunting at, at times it's also haunting yet so often brutally beautiful oh see I, what i'm doing is now i'm waxing lyrical and i'm going off on loads of tangents and i won't stop gushing about it because that's the kind of book this, this is for me so anyway that is a new favorite book of mine. If you would like more of these, please let me know in the comments down below. And um, I will be back on Sunday with a vlog. I missed a video this week just because work is woo at the moment in terms of busyness. That is a technical term. Woo! I'm going to use that in my next one to one. Anyway, I uh, will speak to you all soon. I hope all is well. And uh, yeah, let me know your thoughts on this book and also what your most recent favourite book is. I'd love to know that in the comments down below too. And I will speak to you all soon. Bye.